Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we're going to be comparing the new Ford Ranger to the GMC Canyon. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out thank you to the Jerry Steiner GMC here in South Jordan and to the Larry Schmiller Ford here in Draper for giving me some time with both the trucks. I'll include a link to both our websites in the description down below. And then, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood of the Ranger, we have a turbocharged 2.3 liter four cylinder that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 20 around town and then 24 on the highway with power outputs being 270 horsepower and then 310 pound feet of torque. Now under the hood of the Canyon, we have a turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 17 around town and then 20 on the highway with power outputs being 310 horsepower and then 430 pound feet of torque. Before we move forward with this comparison, I do to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the Ranger, you can see with the new design, you've got these C-shaped LED headlights. You've got fog lights down below. We've got these recovery points here, and we do have some skid plate protection underneath. It seems like all the Rangers, they're kind of making them, you know, more off-road oriented. Now popping over to the Canyon, interesting design language. So we've got a split light design for the uh, lighting cluster. You can see with the LED daytime running light versus the headlight versus the fog light. Tow hooks underneath, this one has the AT4 package. So again, skid plate protection and all of that. And so, yeah. And height-wise, they're actually pretty dang similar. The Canyon sits just a little bit higher than the Ranger though. Now around the side here, our tiring wheel setup with the Ranger is 255, 70, 17 in the front and over in the rear. You can see with the wheels, metallic gray. And I mean, those are kind of kind of all terrain-ish, right? And then look at the fender flares here, XLT badge. And then you got the fixed side step. And then I like with the mirror caps and the door handles, how those are darker. And then the Ranger does still utilize leaf springs. And then this isn't gonna be the best side profile because I'm kind of stuffed between a bunch of cars, but Hopefully you guys can kind of see the side there of the Ranger. Now with the Canyon, our turning wheel setup is 275, 65, 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the Canyon, you got the silver with the metallic gray. Definitely more aggressive with the tread pattern on the tires. And you can see the big fender flares as well as the big fenders. AT4 there on the side. And then just like the Ranger, we've got leaf springs in the back. And then again, same thing, not going to be the best side profile on the planet, but you guys will at least be able to kind of see the side of the truck. Now popping to the bed with the Canyon, you have this little storage space right here, which is really cool. It is drainable, um, but pretty normal bed for a mid-sized pickup truck. We've got an outlet in the bed, so nothing too crazy aside from that. And lifting this up, it's easy. And then popping into the Ranger, you can see we've got a couple of outlets. No bed liner, just like the Canyon. So kind of interesting they both went that route. Um, but tailgate, a little bit lighter on the Ranger, that's for sure. And look at the taillight design on both of them. You can see parking sensors at the bottom. Notice the Canyon has little bumper steps. But yeah, let me know if you like the looks of the Canyon more or the Ranger. Now in the back of the Canyon, pretty typical for the legroom for a mid-sized pickup truck. We also have some cup holders. You can see with the vents and USB ports there. And then look at the trim on the side and the brown trim here. And then this uh, AT4 is kind of like the entry level, so you can see the trim here at the top. And then we've got like cloth inserts in the center, which is very interesting. Uh, manual with the window in the back. And then headroom is pretty good. Now popping up the Ranger, pretty similar with the legroom space. You can see the whole setup here with the little charging ports. Uh, cl full cloth with the XLT here. Got this kind of insert there in the center, which is interesting. Um, and then the window in the back, it looks like this one's power yeah power um anyways headroom it's good well starting things up with the canyon we've got 1515 pounds of payload super solid love the door sound um, but really nice trim inside and then here's a look at the steering wheel you got the gmc logo there you can see the practical controls you got a little stock there on the back and we're just going to pop into auxiliary mode here oh whoops there we go <laughs> <laughs> um, with it, but yeah, full digital gauge cluster here in the uh, Canyon and cool thing is we can actually 
go through here. It's not gonna pick up my finger very well because my finger's just cold enough that the screen's gonna be a little bit unhappy with it. Um, but yeah, really quick, let's turn off the windshield wipers. There we go. Really quick response time with the screen, and we do have a 360 camera system with this. So you can see out of every single angle. And then you notice we've got dual zone climate controls, heated seats, and then you can roll down all the windows at once, auto stop, start, hazard lights, lane departure, auxiliary. It's a little storage area here. There's our shifter. And then we do get an advanced four-wheel drive system with this. And uh, we've got a cool drive mode select, so we've got a bunch of different modes we can scroll through. Oh, I guess when it's not on, it can't turn on the drive modes. But basically on-road and off-road modes with it. Some cup holders, and then you can see the center console. Good storage there. And look at this with the trim on the dash, and then you see AT4 there, which is pretty cool. Um, no center for anything like that. And then this one stickers for about 47K uh, is the MSRP on this. And in terms of not turning this on, you guys will understand. I'll explain the driving portion. Just, just be patient. Now at the Ranger, we've got 1,584 pounds of payload. And nice trim on the door panel for an XLT. See all the window controls here. Uh, the mirrors do power fold in. Looks like we have blind spot monitoring too. And then with the Ranger, we can... Well, I would be able to turn it on, but actually, instead of being a push button like the GMC, it is a uh, traditional key fob, so got to poke it in the ignition here. Um, but anyways, you can see with the steering wheel design here, the Canyon's definitely kind of like fancier with the design, but you know, practicality is pretty similar with this. And then digital gauge cluster, just like the Canyon. And then this has a 360 camera system. Um, not exactly the same as the Canyons. I think the Canyons is a little bit easier to navigate, but still both have 360, which is great. And then vertical infotainment system versus uh, what you have in the Canyon, which is kind of more on the horizontal side. But notice with the seats, we do have heated seats, just like what you have in the Canyon. Dual zone climate as well. The controls are here at the bottom. It's a little charging pad there. Shifter for the 10 speed. Okay, parking brake here. Uh, notice no advanced uh, four wheel auto, just a two speed transfer case. And then we've got stuff like our stability control and then you've got like, your hover modes as well, which is pretty cool. Just center console. I like this with the dash, I think it's uh, nice. So in the Lariat, it was a glove box, but this is just dash, but there is storage there, which is nice. Yeah, pretty cool. And then like I said, our sliding rear window. And then this XLT is about $45,000 for the MSRP. So they're only two grand difference. I had to dig for the keys in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about the visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood. Both the mirrors do have blinds wandering at the rear. And let us set off in the Ranger XLT. So I just reviewed the Lariat the other day, but now we got XLT today in the rain in the rain uh, so I got some big Ranger news my one friend should be taking delivery of his Ranger Raptor relatively I thought we we're gonna be able to make it through here but now I'm kind of questioning we're gonna go we're gonna go the other way we're gonna play it safe um, but yeah his he should be taking delivery of his Ranger Raptor relatively soon and so we will have lots of fun reviews with that because he's a huge off-road enthusiast so we will have uh, reviews taking it off road, all of that stuff, actually doing Raptor stuff with the Raptor. But focusing here on the XLT, nice seats. Uh, I like how the bolstering comes up a bit. It holds you in place nice. But on top of that, it it's not uncomfortable. It's, yeah, good bolstering. Good bolstering overall. And... I guess half this review is going to be getting out of this part of the getting out of this part of the parking lot. But yeah, the two the two three, it's it's a solid powertrain in my opinion. It's it's got it's got good torque for what it is, and I think that so I've seen some comments of people talking about like hey you know, why isn't this have more power now? I think part of that is because Ford's offering the 2.7 V6 in the Ranger, right? As an option. 
which I'm excited to review that when that comes out. So it's like, if you want more power, we've got a bigger engine. Um, but I, I think Ford's also trying to focus on reliability with the Ranger because people that buy mid-sized pickup trucks, reliability is important for them. And having, you know, a turbocharged engine right in innately is not gonna be as reliable as naturally aspirated. But if you do less power on the turbocharged engine, so you're not pushing it to the limits, then that always helps out the reliability. That's what Toyota's done for years, right? They always take a, an engine and they always make it, you know, quote unquote, unpowered, underpowered rather, unpowered, underpowered. And so then that always kind of leads to a bit more reliability with the vehicle. So we'll use this as kind of like our little acceleration slash suspension test. <laughs> Yeah, it's got good power. Again, it's not different. Like if, if you have a previous gen Ranger, you're really not gonna notice the difference from a powertrain perspective. Biggest stuff you'll notice is the interior and then the suspension's a little bit, a little bit different. So yeah, all in all, uh, XLT, um, you know, 45 grand. It's got some solid features with this FX4 package. I mean, you know, for everything it's offering, I think it's pretty reasonably priced. And so, let me know what you guys think about the XLT. I think this might be the Ranger sweet spot for a lot of people, XLT FX4, because it's still relatively affordable. And then it also has some off-road chops. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood, both the mirrors. So with the rest of the rear. And you guys can see the fuel range there. It says fuel level low. Then also says 40 miles. So <laughs> here's my little backstory. Here's my little backstory behind the fuel situation with this truck. So I get in this truck and it says that it has 50 miles of range. Um, and so I'm like, okay, I'm not planning on going 50 miles, so that should be completely fine. And then next thing I know, as I'm slowly reversing out of the parking space this was in, the range keeps dropping. And I'm like, okay, it's a little bit weird. And I'm like, whatever it's just adjusting and then I get driving and then it keeps doing the same thing and I'm like okay computers glitching out I don't know what's happening um but, but basically not enough fuel and then as I was like already on the road and already like halfway to the destination here I realized that I didn't have my wallet on me and I'm like I can't fill it up at the gas station so I'm like okay I'm just gonna shut the truck off not turn it on whatsoever and not risk it for the biscuit so yeah. Anyways, can show you guys the gauge cluster with the changes. I think it's pretty cool how you can change with the different kind of settings on the gauge cluster. I don't know. I, I think it's fun how there's so many different modes depending on what you're doing with the truck. I don't know. I just think it's cool. Um, but some other stuff, these seats are actually comfortable. Uh, the cloth inserts, they aren't bad. Not bad at all. I think it's actually a pretty nice setup they got going on here. Um, now, aside from that, interior is really nice with the Canyon AT4. It's definitely a premium mid-size pickup truck is what I would put it at when it comes to the interior. Oh, we should be finally good to go through. Yeah, would you look at that? Tons of torque out of this engine. Tons of torque. You can feel it right off the bat. And I can actually get up and move. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, the four cylinder on the Canyons just does such a great job when it comes to power. So yeah, with, with how this package is set up, I think that the exterior styling on the Canyon AT4, fantastic, it looks great. And then the interior, this is not too different from the loaded up AT4, frankly. Like this trim, all this looks pretty much the same. The biggest difference that I've noticed is the seats with the inserts, right? You've got these cloth inserts versus the full leather that you have, but it still has a 360 camera. I guess it doesn't have the cooled seats. So that's another thing. So 360 camera, cooled seats, uh, or sorry, it has, so leather seats, cold seats, but it has everything else and it's quite, a, it's thousands of dollars less. That's the crazy part. It's how much less money this is. 
So yeah, I, regardless, I think this is a bargain. Uh, $47,000, Tacoma SR5 is that price, basically. $46,000 for the SR5 that I reviewed. And that's base model Tacoma, cloth seats, all of that. So yeah, I just think that the value that they're offering here is really solid. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys. If you're still here, this is because this is the Canyon versus Ranger comparison. And here's my final thoughts comparing them. So I think that both of the trucks drive really well. Um, it's it's kind of tough in terms of, of picking a winner, but here's what I'll say. I think that when it comes to exterior styling, it's gonna come up to personal preference, but I will say the Canyon kind of has like a meaner uh, look, kind of meaner in your face. It's 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 really aggressive. They, done a, they did a great job with the styling on this new Canyon. Interior is really nice on this as well. You get great, great features in both of them. Uh, pretty similar feature to feature. Just, I would say these seats are a little bit more premium, but again, it's $2,000 more. So kind of expect a little bit nicer seat. Definitely more power to this engine. Definitely more power. I mean, you can, you can feel it. You can feel the power difference between both of the vehicles, especially in the torque side of things. That was a loud truck. With that being said, uh, I guess what I'll say to cap things off is, you know, we'll have to see long-term reliability with both of these powertrains. I imagine that even though this has more power, I mean, there is the chance that, I'm not saying it's not reliable, but that it might not be as reliable, potentially, because you're stuffing so much power into a four-cylinder, but we'll just have to see over the long-term. Let me know if you'd go Canyon or if you'd go Ranger, but it's crazy that XLT Ranger FX4 and Canyon AT4 it's only a $2,000 price difference between the trucks. I was not expecting that.